Welcome to Snackable Business Nuggets with your host, Jason Kramer, founder of Cultivize. Jason helps companies identify, nurture, and convert prospects to customers using marketing automation strategies with the top-rated all-in-one CRM, email, and sales platform. On each segment of the show, you'll hear from industry leaders that will share what it took to get them where they are today, as well as helpful tips that you can apply to your business right away and hear what their perspectives are on marketing, sales, and business. So relax, grab your favorite snack, and get ready to think about your business from a whole new point of view. Welcome to Snackables in our Business Nuggets with your host, me, Jason Kramer, founder of Cultivize. We help identify, nurture, and convert prospects to customers using marketing automation strategies and a top-rated all-in-one CRM, email, and sales platform. But enough about me, let's talk about the show and our guest today. On each segment of Snackable Business Nuggets, you'll hear from industry leaders that will share their story, struggles, and tips. So sit back, grab your favorite snack, and get ready to think about your business from a whole new perspective. On today's show, we're talking with Vicki Hart, founder of Hart Marketing Cooperative. She's a creative concierge that helps marketing savvy companies demystify marketing and crystallize their objectives. She brings in her cooperative, which is her team of experts to craft solutions. They are specialists at what they do and leaving you to be the specialist at what you do. So Vicki, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Jason. Oh, my pleasure. So Vicki, um, if we can start off, how did you get into your field and what led you to form the company you have today? Well, Jason, I have to tell you, I, I worked in the city for 24 years, which even surprises me. Uh, but 19, almost 19 of those years, I worked for a creative recruitment agency in Midtown, where we placed art directors and designers. And I started to see when I was out networking that there was an opportunity. Because when I went out and networked, I would um, go do what I, I'd go back to the office and I'd do what I do, which is go follow up, I connect, we you know, start the foundations of building a relationship together. But then I saw that people had to go back and go build a website or go and uh, create an SEO, create SEO requirements or go do strategy or go do media buying. And they had to go do what they do, but I was already doing what I did. So I saw that there might be this opportunity. So instead of connecting freelancers to projects within, you know, large companies and small design firms, I thought that there was an opportunity to create corp to corp connections, which is how Mar marketing cooperative was born. Oh, that sounds fascinating. Um, and I should add to that Vicki and I have known each other for quite some time. Um, so I was with her on that journey, um, you know, on the other side of the fence, so to speak, uh, to see her blossom, you know, into this new venture, which is uh, very exciting for anybody going in and starting a new business. So I know I've had them, but what were some of the, and many I'm sure people listening here have had growing pains starting a business um, so what are some lessons you've learned that you can share today that have helped you um, pivot or lessons you learned from the prior, you know, role you played to start that business with perhaps a little bit better ease or more clarity, whatever the case may be? That's a great question, Jason, because when I first started my business, I'm two and a half years in, um, I wanted to wish away my first year before it even happened. Like I knew I was going to have to go through some things, make some mistakes, figure things out. I'm a very tactical learner in the respect of like, I, I get things from a, you know, from how they look on paper, but then when you, when you put them into practice, they may not always come out you know, the way that you plan. So really what's so critical is one, be kind to yourself. Understand that you're going to have to, um, you're, you may write down a plan, but you have to be prepared to change. Like with any plan, with any strategy, you have to be willing and be ready to pivot because the longer time it takes you to pivot, the longer you can miss an opportunity or, you know, it's, it just, you have to be able to recover quickly. And it, it is really important to know that you are going to make mistakes and it's how you uh, recover from them and how you rebound and how you problem solve. That really is the quality of, uh, of 
how I developed my service line. It's, I knew that if I was going to be making mistakes that I needed to just how I responded to it made all the difference. So that was really my first year. So I would tell anybody starting out, be patient, have a plan and be prepared to pivot off that plan if necessary to get the results that you're looking for. Yeah. I mean, it's often the, uh, the comic you see sometimes, or even in the movies where it's the, uh, the waste paper basket at the side with, you know, uh, you know, dozens and dozens of crumbled up pieces of paper of, you know, <laughs> the idea just not working and, Moving on to the next one. But it so, sounds so good on paper or yeah. it looks so good. You know, I, that, was, it was, that was a really big lesson for me. And that was some of the things that kind of kept me up at night. Um, but once I, you know, learned to respond, I was, my, my, my waste paper bag still has, my basket still has those things because you're always refining, you're always pivoting, you're always making it better. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and I think even if you look at the biggest companies of the world, you know, they've all started out in one place and have pivoted to completely else, you know, and people mm -hmm. forget that Google just used to be a search engine you used to go there and there was no shopping component. There was no advertising component there. You know, there, there, there this whole infrastructure of what they've built in terms of technology and AI wasn't there from day one. It was right. constantly just evolving and saying, what can we do better? And, and, and you have to kind of respect companies that have the, um, you know, the understanding and want to embrace that change because quite honestly, you know, you and I both know and, and people listening know that there are thousands and thousands of companies out there that are reluctant to change and are very happy just kind of sitting in their comfort seat and just going at the same pace year after year without really not looking outside that, you know, proverbial, you know, box that, that you know, people use as a metaphor. Um, Jeez, and that's like such an important, important message to underscore is that change is happening. It's happening faster now than ever before. And you always have to be, you, you can't just set it and forget it. Nothing is set it and forget it now, or you will be, uh, you'll be eliminated in less than six months. Like you have to always be changing, staying on top of the trends, staying on top of what's going on and not just muttering through and just trying to get your day done if you're not kind of seeing what's happening down the pipeline you're going to get crushed so it, it's very true yeah absolutely and it's and it's happened to a number of different industries and we could talk about that oh. probably for hours on end um yep. <laughs> but that might be another segment um so what are um so the people that are the businesses that are coming to you vicky mm -hmm. um what are they hiring you to do and while i i want that to be shared with you know the the listeners um what i'd love to know is what should the people listening look for right in a company like yours if they're looking for those same types of services for their own business well jason again a very good question because i always ask people three things do you know that you need marketing and you don't know where to start do you have marketing and you're not happy with the results or do you have a gap in resources? At Heart Marketing Cooperative, we work in two lanes. We have concierge services where we work with companies helping them crystallize their marketing message and then a we discover their budget and then we align their objectives with their budget because oftentimes objectives and budgets can be off from each other. And what I do on my con with my concierge services is I bring them the right resource based on those objectives their budget, and also culture. I get to know the client. I become, I'm a client advocate. And so I take the client through the entire buyer journey. So as they're looking at resources that can best get to their objective, I tap into my vast and deep bench of, of strategic partners that I work with that are located in New York, New Jersey. I have strategic partners in California, in Colorado, and other parts of the country. Because um, it really is fit and culture and budget, all are the things that really do matter in trying to identify. So we take the client through the entire buyer journey and then the client has full opportunity to interview these people and qualify who is a right fit for them. So mm -hmm. I'm not making any decisions for them other than I am 
whittling down a very huge field without them having to know where to start. Whether if they're just going to go to Google and hit, have luck, or maybe they'll get a great referral from someone, and they're sitting across from somebody who's absolutely terrific and can deliver everything, but is nowhere in their ballpark. I take all that pain out of it in the beginning so that we just get down to brass tacks as to what, so I'm putting the right people who are in your ballpark in front of you without you having to go through those painful and very expensive, you know, time is money. And if you're going to waste your time meeting great people who aren't a right fit, you know, that's your prerogative, but I like to help people, um, you know, get through that and get past that in a, in a very expeditious way. And then on the other side, we work with companies who really need to that know that they, that they have a, their company may be existing or it could be a startup and they need to develop the brand voice, you know, time and time again, because I, I network a lot in both New York and New Jersey, people say, I need a new card, but your card isn't going to get you business. A new website isn't necessarily going to get you a business alone. You need to have your brand positioning together, know who you are, articulate your value proposition, and know who in a sea of people who do exa exactly the same thing that you do, you and I both know there's other marketers out there that, and we all approach it differently. Mm -hmm. So how do I make myself stand out next to the 15 other people in a room full of network yep. marketers. So, um, so then we help them do their brand positioning. Then we move forward to do their branding and then which leads to websites. And then sometimes that means we, we bring in some of our other strategic partners or sometimes we handle it in house. It really does depend on budget and, uh, you know, the value that we can deliver. If we don't feel like we can deliver the full value that you need, like somebody else is better at it, then we bring them in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it sounds also kind of like, and, uh, you know, to me, what, what comes to head to my mind is when I was looking to buy, you know, my first house, right? It's like you try to do that on your own, right? And you try to do your research and try to figure out best school district and best area <laughs> and all these other, you know, taxes Ooh. and all these other scenarios. And at the end of the day, you realize that there is a value to that broker and that, you know, four to 6% commission that you think seemingly is high the value is that they've already done all that legwork. They, they, right. they know what you to, to kind of like, you know, the budget, you know, scenario, they know what you're looking for. They know what your needs are. You want a swimming pool, you want four bedrooms, you want whatever. This is where you look, you know, it's like, right. because yes, there's tools out there, you know, Zillow and all the other things, but you're going to go kind of crazy trying to do that on your own in a lot of cases. And similarly, yes, you're right. I mean, you know, you go in, on search for, web designers for graphic designers, copywriters, and all these people. And the problem is you don't know if they're any good. And right. not to say that there aren't good ones out there, just a lot of work to find the good ones, you know? So, um, so that's great. That's great advice, you know, and I think, you know, working with, you know, someone like yourself could help, you know, define who should they talk to and help kind of oversee and make sure the right people are coming into the fold. And we're not limited by size. As I said, we work with startups, but we also work with, big national corporations um, who have in-house resources, but sometimes they have a gap in resources. Not everybody has, if they have an in-house video department, nine times out of 10, they're usually handling the B2B work versus mm -hmm. the B2C. And we have teams that do national commercials. We have people that do media buys. We can pull together all of those resources for you. You know, we like to say, uh, you know, we get the talent, the same talent from Madison Avenue, but you're not paying for our overhead. You're not paying for, you're getting New York quality talent that's, you know, accessible to you without having an AOR and not being uh, paying for my foosball table or my barista because I don't have those. Right. <laughs> and, and so, you know, there's definitely ways that you can, we're not looking to be somebody's AOR. We're looking to help them on projects where they're looking for a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to go those traditional routes. We know in big age against an uh, AOR, an agency of record, we're anywhere from 25 to 40% less. If you give me the same parameters that you're giving your AOR from, for deliverables, and we have the creative and we have all the right pieces in place, we're delivering a superior product at 25 to 40% less. I mean, to us, that's a no-brainer, but. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, coming from, you know, from the agency world, you know, over 15 years ago, um, you know, working as a designer myself before I um, got into to being my own, you know, owner for, for, for two businesses now, mm-hmm. um, you know, it was always the, the kind of myth, not myth, if you will, because there is value to, to some people wanting that agency, that mm-hmm. AOR. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of times it's also, you know, we used to joke that people had a big agency name on record to say, well, if things don't go well, we had the best of the best, you know, right. And right. It was kind of like almost like an insurance policy where it's like, well, you know, what we do, we were paying $10 million, $10, you know, $10 million a year in a retainer. We, we went to do to, to, to number, to the number one guy, you know, one number one team and it didn't work, but it's not our fault. You know? But our business is you know? broken. Well, you that's know? a funny point that I often make is sometimes people come to me with what is a marketing pro, what they is perceived as a marketing problem, but it really is a business problem. Mm-hmm. And no amount of marketing will help someone who's having a business problem. So what we do is we refer business coaches who can help get that house in order because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, Marketing starts with having a brand and a brand quite simply is a promise that you make. And if you can't deliver on that promise, you break your brand. Mm-hmm. When you break your brand, it's like getting, you know, being an A student and getting that one C getting you're you're no longer an A student anymore. Right. And so it's, it's trying to, you know, make sure we can't make you make your brand we can dis- we can articulate it for you and it's up to you and your business practices to be able to deliver on that brand promise well said well said so um you know the next question i had for you was mm-hmm. you know as a and this is kind of more that of a something that that i think everybody kind of deals with you know both in life and and, and in business but i was curious if there is a particular struggle or that comes to mind either, you know, kind of personally or professionally that you've turned into a win and kind of how did you achieve taking that struggle and turning it into, you know, a positive outcome? Well, it's interesting. I think being a business owner, you always have your eye on your pipeline and making sure that your pipeline is um, uh, always filled. So I, in my second year, I spent a lot of time going after bigger businesses. And I spent all this time fostering, like getting these, I I had the right people in the room and we were asking the right questions and we're doing all the qualifying. And I'd spend some 50, 60 hours on trying to get these two clients. And what I did do, you know, we were doing proposals, we were bringing in strategic partners. We were on this. And what I did is took my eye off my pipeline. And I ended up um, not getting either client, which was a heartbreak. One, I definitely put a lot more time into, but it just turned out I had all, all the people in the U.S. operations in the room. I had the president, the CEO, the CFO, the, the global sales director. They were all on board except for that one person in a foreign country who was just like, I don't believe in marketing. And so um, what I ended up learning and the struggle that I had was one double qualify that you have all the right people in the room mm-hmm. and two, how I was able to kind of turn it into a win to answer your question was, you know, I looked at my pipeline and I saw that my pipeline was like anemic because I've been spending so much time trying to cultivate these big fish. Yeah. And what I did do is realign my strategy and really look to have a balanced portfolio for myself where we had a balance of concierge services with agency services so that I could offset some, you know, I, I could do tactical work while I was out. You know, when I, whenever I meet someone, I, I don't present that, hey, I have an answer for you. You know, I can solve all your marketing problems, even though I secretly know I can. But I don't know what the solution yet is until we've talked to them, uh, until we've talked to the people. So what I've really, I was able to turn it into a win by realigning my business strategy to have, spend time on business development for both that concierge, which became passive income for me, and on the agency services where I was able to like get more of a, um, 
income that was mine versus paying it out to my strategic partners. Sure. So I was like, I balanced my wheel. It was painful. There were nights where I was like waking up. I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I've got nothing in my pipeline. And, but by being constructive about it and looking back at what could have been a major loss, I was able to pivot. And then I started a whole new business. line. actually, that's where my agency services started because this way I could kind of feed myself without, you know, feed us, Mm -hmm. without, you know, completely starving while well, you're investing in going after those bigger fish. Big companies can definitely, where they sound like they're a great idea, sometimes they can take you down if you spend too, because the sales oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, without a doubt. And I've so did seen that, that answer firsthand. your question? It did, yeah, absolutely, yeah. That was terrific. Um, and I've seen that firsthand happen, you know, and I, I, I've, I've felt in that, you know, I mean, at points, right, you, you focus on something and you think it's really going to, pay off and oh i was and you know no believed i mean one of the things i i love that i'm able to provide to you know the companies we work with is that you know the platform we has you know amongst many different value you know components is one of them is being able to know kind of what i say is like what's on the street and what's going to close because right. you know from a from a sales perspective you know writing proposals you, you get all excited you're like okay i have you know $150,000 worth of proposals out there. And that's great. You know, this is going to be awesome. And, and then you look at the probability, which if you don't have a system to do that and a, and a, and a, uh, a formula to do that, then you're assuming in your head, I got $150,000 potentially coming up. Right. <laughs> right. But, but the reality is it's, if it's only like 10% chance first. that it's going to close. <laughs> it's far away from 150,000, you know? Um, so there's definitely, a reality check kind of needed, you know, when it, when it comes to that. Um, so obviously you're very in tune with what's going on, you know, in the industry and you've mentioned that a couple of times on the conversation here. So what trends do you see happening, you know, in the world that you operate in and what should people kind of be looking out for or aware of, you know, um, as those changes are happening? I mean, it is changing so fast <laughs> that it's so, it is, it's hard for myself even being in marketing to, you uh, you know, keep my finger on the pulse of it at all times. You know, the things with, I mean, I always believe I know Facebook and all, like all of social media is going through such challenges right now with privacy and whatnot. You know, I would definitely keep an eye on what's going to happen with, uh, with social media. I don't think it's, it's not ever going to go away. I think it's great uh, low hanging fruit to be able to create brand awareness and thought leadership. Um, you know, we really, it's going to be interesting to see how privacy shakes out uh, privacy laws and things that are happening and the, the, the European or the GDRP and all that, how it's going to change. So it really is critical to stay on top of what's going on. And I would definitely say, um, you know, video has been such a huge thing that we're seeing in our business. Really strategic ad placement has been, I mean, I'm not, I haven't read anything that's really shaken my tree yet that I'm going to say, oh, we need to get on top of that. But I would definitely say be on top of like the changes that are happening and the things that are happening with privacy, because that really is going to affect how those mediums, the efficacy of those mediums. I mean, you don't need, with all the filters and all the laws, you don't even know what people are able to see anymore. And they may be blocking your ads and your boosts and you don't even know it. Uh -huh. um, so those are just things that I keep an eye out for. Um, you know, I, I use social media as a tool all the time, but I do think it is, you know, like I said, it's low hanging fruit. It's a great way to create brand visibility. I'd be cautious about how you're spending on social media. Um, there's a variety of ways to, um, you know, get your name out there or get your messaging out there or get your promotions out there. So it does depend. It also depends on your business and B2B social media is it's, I wouldn't necessarily spend a ton on doing in certain spaces, but on LinkedIn, I would definitely think about thought leadership. Not that any of this is necessarily earth shattering and new news, but these are things that we trends that we are continuing to see success in is thought leadership, people mm -hmm. doing webinars, co-branded experiences with strategic partners and strategic alliances. Um, so those to my clients, 
uh, when we talk That's about great. strategies. Yeah. For and, I, and I would agree with that, you know, and to add that, you know, there's, I think, a misconception that people think that, you know, quality is more important than value, you know, and, you know, there's been certainly a lot of people I know in, you know, my network and just people you see online on social media, you know, my world is mostly, you know, B2B. So I'm on LinkedIn more than any other platform. 1000% um, a great platform for you. Right. Uh, but, you know, you see tons of people put, putting video content and, you know, last time I checked, I think it's, it's less than 5% of LinkedIn users are actively putting video content out there. Right. You know, so there's a huge opportunity for video on LinkedIn and you started to see a surge, I think, with people getting, realizing that, you know what, it doesn't matter where I am. It doesn't matter if I'm working in my home office or from in my kitchen or from my car or walking down the street. If you have something of value to put out there and it's meaningful, then go for it, you know? And what I find, it's one of those things where it's almost like the billboard, right? And, and you know the stat where they say that you have to see a billboard seven times before it even gets registered in your head because your subconscious is filtering out all that kind of noise around right. you, you know? And I think video is a great way, specifically on LinkedIn, where even if, you know, you post one video every single day, even if it's a 30 second video and you have one quick tip to offer, everybody that you're, that's following you is going to see that video and it's going to be like just embrained in them, you know, subconscious over and over so that when they do need you or they do need something you're talking about, mm -hmm. you could be the first person they think of because you've built this whole kind of, you know, um, you know, aurora around them um, so that you become first of mind. That's actually a great point because there are statistics out that say that people's cell phone videos get more, are, are ranked as more authentic and more believable than necessarily, not that I want to take business away from my video production friends because there's definitely a time and a place for that. But when you start thinking about the feasibility of posting a tip or a trick or a, a snippet or some word of advice on your page every day, um, you know, that's something that you can easily do with a good microphone. Definitely sound quality is so critical. And then, you know, they have those little phone lights that you can do, the little circle lights that you can do for your phone so that you can do uh, production to get your, your brand out. I mean, that is definitely a, a great way to do that. We're doing like micro content, mm -hmm. 15 second, you know, people don't have the appetite for it for much. They don't have the attention span for much longer, right, but it right. does. That's an excellent point. I'll have the attention span for this conversation, though, because it's very invigorating. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad it's not on video, Jason. You know how animated I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Vicki, um, I, I want to thank you for, for being my guest today. I appreciate it. Um, I'm sure that those that are listening uh, have seen the um, you know, value and wisdom and the, uh, what you shared. Um, I know that it's, uh, you're a great resource. Um, you know, to me and have been. And um, so I guess I want to leave it with how could the people that are listening find out about you and your company? How can they contact you? The best way to reach me um, is, well, my website is Heart Marketing Co-op, H-A-R-T-E, Marketing Co-op, C-O-O-P dot com. And my email is Vicky V-I-C-K-I, at heartmarketingcoop.com. And that's a great way to reach out. Um, I also can be reached on my office number. Is that tacky to give that out? No, sure, go for it. 973-457. Oh wait, I'm giving you my home number. No, you can't have my phone home phone number. Do you know why? I don't answer my home phone. <laughs> So if you want to talk to Boy, Vicky's voicemail, you could call that number. If you want that, if you want that number, yes. Yeah. So it's 973-387-0404. All right, terrific. Well, thank so you. Sorry if you have to do some editing on that one, That's Jason. okay. We'll take care of it. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again for, uh, for talking with me today, and I uh, really appreciate it. Jason, thank you so much. Anytime right. and any way that I can help. Heart Marketing Cooperative, your marketing journey made easy. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Thank you.